If you ever thought that money could buy you style, well think again, because I'm going to prove to you guys you can look absolutely fantastic without breaking the bank. Welcome to the show that rips the label of fashion. Hi! I'm going to prove you don't need to be a label slave to be a style icon, as I go head to head with the queens of designer fashion. Also tonight, I discovered that diamonds really are Damon Oak's best friend. £120,000 for them. Yeah. It is a house in your ear, isn't it? Alexa gets ahead of fashion with Angela Massoni. 2009? Yes. Wow, this is like a sneak preview. And I seek out the fashion angel of the North as my travelling catwalk hits Newcastle. Hello, Newcastle! Welcome to my fashion fix. Right here, I'm going to be revealing all of my insider secrets so you guys can get show-stopping style without the heart-stopping prices. In less than one hour's time, eight gorgeous models are going to be strutting their stuff down this runway. Now, four of them are going to be in high-end looks and four of them in high street looks, but the audience have no idea at all which is which. Now, it's backstage it all happens. On this side, four girls are about to slip into quite literally thousands and thousands of pounds worth of clothes. And on this side, four girls are going to be wearing high street outfits that I've styled, all of which are coming in at around 200 pounds a pop. Tonight's theme is Working Girl. I'm going to take you seamlessly from desk to dance floor because girls going to work is the new going out. But according to our fashionistas, you're going to need to work plenty of overtime to afford this look. This season is a great, great season for the return of glamour to the working environment. It's so important to get investment pieces in this area of your wardrobe. A suit is, you know, is impossible to copy on the high street. It's, you know, the, the cut, the, the fabric, the way it sits in the body. It's something you wear every day. And I can't understand why people won't invest in something they wear every day. So what are these fashion vixens working for us this week? First up, Brick Smith start from Start Boutique. I think the main basis of the look are these Miu Miu trumpet leg trousers. It's skinny down the leg and then flares out, but it's not like a nasty hippie flare or a scary flare. It's very chic. Definitely white, the Miu Miu white shirt from this season as well with these sleeves. Sexy and worky. And that's, that is a weird juxtaposition that's really hard to get, where you look sexy and worky at the same time but you don't push it too far, you're not like the sex bomb in the office, you know. <laughs> and Do you need a bag? Yes, always Pork Sweeney. We, I worship at the feet of Pork Sweeney. Working girl done! Erin Mullaney from Browns is creating designer outfit number two. I'm thinking maybe Roland Ray. Oh, I love Roland, that is amazing. The inside is almost as amazing as the outside. Exactly. I mean, he really does know how to cut a suit to fit a woman's body. The back and the panelling is amazing. It nips in the waist, which makes you look really tiny. You wear clothes for you, and I think, you know, having a beautiful lining on the inside of your suit or having, you know, a suit that's cut made to order for you is going to make you go into a meeting and feel really confident about yourself. What about this YSL? It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It goes great with the suit. Colours are beautiful. You could fit all your paperwork in that. We've got some great penny loafers, which is like a new twist on the penny loafer. You like the colours? Definitely, yeah. I think this might be our winner. Designer outfit number three comes from Lena Basmer at Selfridges. What do you think? Oh, I love this. You can wear the shell top to underneath. go underneath. And then... Probably a pair of trousers as well. Yeah. Perfect some high heels. Yeah. If you're going out in the evening, you can whip the trousers off and put on a pair of tights and stilettos and it's almost like a dress. Serious power dressing, aren't they? I think that's a really glamorous look for the working girl. And Harrods buyer Marigay McKee picks out the fourth designer outfit. The black satin shift. Yeah, it's perfect. Because I think that would take you from the office if you have an event later. In a, to an event oh, yeah. in the evening. I 
were to say, what's the one piece that should be in every working girl's wardrobe? For me, it's the black dress. Everybody that knows me knows I'm synonymous with the black dress. I probably have about 20 in my wardrobe, and it's what I live in. Francois, could you get us the um, Le Boutin architect um, and the clutch for the evening? Yeah. Thanks. Perfect, let's have a look. This clutch is just so divine. I mean, it would make anybody feel absolutely super glamorous. Let's have a look at that shoe, Francois. Yeah, I think that's perfect. I think Gok will have a harder time as well on this trend because the fabric that you make a suit in is very, very important. Let me just say, hmm, suits on the high street, they're always ill-fitting. Whatever. The fashionists think they've got their workwear in the designer bag. Time to check out the competition with my fashion insider, Alexa Chan. Come here, Balenciaga. <sighs> wants to meet you and say, oh, Gok, are you scared? I love you it. Should be. I love the American football shoulders on it. Isn't it's it absolutely amazing? gorgeous. It is beautiful. What does it come with? Got trousers. Oh. How cool are they? Oh, my God, to That's die for. That's not conventional for. office wear, but, like, so no. classic in the cut. I can't imagine great. someone running around office angels in this outfit, They I should have to do. Say. They should do. So what goes with this entire suit, then? <laughs> OK, you're going to, like, close your eyes. All right. Ah! Oh, <laughs> Aren't they beautiful? Wow. Yeah. Look at them. I'd sell my soul for that soul. Would you? Yeah. Do you sick. know what? I have to say, I could probably get you a pair of these for about 50 or 60 quid from the high street. As if you could. They're Very amazing. Similar. Don't deny it. How much are these coming at? They're just over £500. £500? Yeah. So 250 quid of shoe in my hand right now. Yeah. Do you know what? I do love maybe them. Maybe you could buy one at a time. You could do that, couldn't you? Or maybe on HP. Alexa, I'll see you when I win. Sure. Next up, how to bag yourself a couture clutch. I have got the £20 bag from New Look. I'm going to make this look really, really expensive. Alexa gets in a knot over designing knitwear. Hi, sorry, can you just check my fare? I think it's up to scratch. And there's a shocking store in my dirty laundry basket for Danny Minogue. How hideous is that? <laughs> Before all that, my insider tips on this week's must-haves. Say happy birthday to the original ballet pump. Pretty Ballerina celebrates its 90th year with these limited edition sparklers. This sexy silky skirt is a fashion find for all seasons. Its hot print makes it a must for the summer, but team with tights to be bang on trend in the autumn too. So times are hard, people, but I'm going to be proving to you you do not need to splash the cash to look on trend this summer. I'm going to teach you how to customise high street gear so you look every inch as fabulous as all those devotees of high-end clobber. So how can I take the hard work out of workwear on a budget? The key is to customise your clobber. First stop, your local haberdashery. Now... I have got this £20 bag from New Look. I'm going to make this look really, really expensive with some very cheap trimmings. I want 18 inch tassels, but as you can see, it's like Aladdin's cave. It's a matter of finding them. I think we might be on the next one, so hurry up. Hurry up. Wonderful. Right, aha, here we are. So here it is. 18 inch fringing now. If you come with me, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to do to this bag to make it look so glamorous and fool all of those studio audience to think this is a high end bag. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to the bag, but I'm going to do two layers of it to make sure it's really, really thick and beautiful and glossy. So five pounds a metre times two is a tenner plus a 20 quid bag, 30 quid in total. This is how you get high street couture. And my fabulous fringe bag is the basis for my first look. Guaranteed to get the job you want. So what I've done now is I've got Gemma in these wonderful high-waisted trousers. Now, originally, these trousers had a slight flare to them. They've got pleats at the top, loads and loads of bulk, and the trousers flared out. But what I did is I sent them to a seamstress, and I've just got her to taper as close to Gemma's calf as possible, and then add a zip. And what it's done, it's completely reinvented these trousers and turned them into a contemporary jodhpur. So now, I'm going to add on a very, very corporate shirt. What I want to try and do is mix this whole look and keep it looking as masculine and androgynous as possible, but still keeping it looking really, really sexy. What's going to make these trousers look even more expensive is, in fact, not seeing any of this panel just here. So I'm just going to literally cover it up with a thick, wide-waisted belt with just these tiny little hooks and eyes on. Dead cheap, 
in seconds, what that's done is it's got rid of all of that middle section there. It's made it look far more expensive and far neater. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on a gorgeous pair of heels. And I love these because these have got sparkles all over them. And also these have got this great gothic element to them, which I absolutely love. And it's a big look this season as well. Because I want to attach it with a really glam, glitzy brooch. Two arm suspenders, again from a gent's shop. So there you go. Ding dong. You know, City Chic is all about keeping it really, really sexy. Do you know what? Just because you work in a man's environment does not mean you need to dress like a fella. It suddenly becomes a completely different city that girlfriend's going to work in. Do you know what? I absolutely love it. If more people like this worked in the city, there'd be less people on painkillers. Outfit number one, clocked in. Highway because I'm looking for a UK style icon and the best place to find one is on the British streets. So today I'm in the land of the white stilettos to uncover the truth on what Geordies really wear. But before my search starts, I'm going on a quick shopping trip to get some local style knowledge and I've hooked up with Polly, a top fashion buyer who sells more clothes to the lasses of Newcastle than anybody else. Polly! <laughs> Hi! Hello, how are you? Thank you. Mwah. Right, Polly, tell me about street style. I'm looking for someone with individuality, someone with personality, someone a little bit fashion courageous. Am I going to find it in Newcastle today? Absolutely. It's probably going to be somebody who's going to mix it up. So right. it's somebody who's going to do vintage, it's somebody who's going to do high strike, right. and it's somebody who's going to be wearing a brand as well. Right, okay. And that, for me, that's what Newcastle and fashion and style so is So there's a about. massive fusion. It's like a big old bowl of noodles with everything in. <laughs> right? Pretty much so. My hopes raise for a mix-up of style. I rally the very best to represent. Why are you style like them? Um, it's just where I wear my clothes. Are you going to go on the runway today? So, let's do it. Yeah, you are. Well, I'll see you down there. OK. Hello, Newcastle! With the star trance donning their war paint, let battle commence. Gorgeous. First up, Guerrilla Tactics, with a fine display from the Geordie Global Resistance. Being a student, so I'm on a student budget, I usually have to recycle all my clothes anyway. Like my like night dunks that I customise myself. Next! The flirty feministas are hoping loose layers and florals and pretty patterns can win the day. This While the ditzy delights prove granny chic is definitely in, as these girls combine kookiness and cardigans. I don't really like shop that much, but I get cheap things and put them together with like maybe a little bit more expensive. And... The 21st century punk shake up hairspray and hair dye with deconstructed attitude. While the new mod squad get out their wardrobe weaponry of skinny ties and drain pipe jeans. Finally, the fashion outlaws to find tribalism to make a unique fashion statement. I just think it's so important just to make the effort to look nice. Clothes and fashion are my hobby, it's something I enjoy. Newcastle has come up trumps with a gorgeous Geordie style explosion, but for me, there were just five that stood out from the rest. I love Nancy Strawn's style, this girl's got it right. It's high street, it's funky, it's young, and it's sexy. With Samantha Lincoln, it's all about the cut. From the chic bob to the statement jacket, she's got a sharp eye for style. Now we've got high street shops that are a lot cheaper. People haven't really got an excuse not to go out there and, and look nice. Vicky Henry really impressed me too. She proves that it doesn't matter if you're a size 8 or 18, everyone can look gorgeous with the right clothes. And I've never in a million years ever thought that I'd ever be picked for anything like this. Next is Jamie Warren. He pulls together a mix of urban with indie with funk. It's fun, it's creative. My final favourite has got to be James Hill. He rocks a look that says, I'm with the band, and that's the final entry in the Newcastle chart. Have you always stood out from the crowd? Um, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> it's simple, it's not over the top, it looks very, very sexy, and do you know what? It looks bang on trend as well. 
All five work an individual look and without a single white stilly inside, but only one can be my style angel of the north. The finalist of the Newcastle Heat is... Samantha Lincoln! Samantha absolutely deserved to win simply because every single bit of her detail was completely right. She pulls it off an absolute treat. I can't believe, I can't believe it. Um, can we put a thread through that? Yeah, and then just pull that a bit tighter, just so it looks a little bit more gothic. Do you know what, this week, I have to say, Sarah, this week it's really tough. It's really hard. It's those little details that are going to make it work. Tonight's catwalk face-off is fast approaching, and I've got three more working girl looks to create. For my next outfit, it's a super sexy suit with to die for detailing. OK, so this is a really simple pencil skirt. Now, pencil skirts come at different lengths. The look I'm going for now is about 1930, so just below the knee. And Olivia's got the most fabulous legs, and we don't want to cover them up too much. So we've got that on. Now, with the jacket, this is basically a fitted box jacket. Absolutely gorgeous. I love this. Fitted around the shoulders and around the waist, and it's got this beautiful kick-out hem all the way around. So already, I think this is a fabulous suit. Do you know what? You probably need to have a little top, or if you're feeling very racy, or your boss will let you, you could get away with a bra underneath. Now what I'm going to do, I have got here this product called a bias binding, and it's absolutely brilliant. The reason why it's good is because it goes around corners. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to edge the whole of the jacket all the way around here, here, here and here, and I'm going to put a line around the empire line because I really want to show off Olivia's waist as well. That binding will carry on around the neck as well. All of that trimming is going to make this jacket look more expensive. So I'm going to take these shoes now, which I absolutely love, 1930 stroke 40 style shoes with this amazing quilting detail just here. So jump up on this box, my darling. So let's pop that one on. To me now, we are building up that absolutely gorgeous Uber Chanel feel. But what I'm going to do now is just turn around. So I'm going to add on these little bad boys to stitch them on just out of really, really simple ribbon. I have to say, a little styling trip. Odd numbers always look better. So five bows on the back of the skirt. I absolutely love that little touch. Now, to complete the whole look, we've got a little handbag and we've got a pair of gorgeous driving gloves in cream as well. When you see a little outfit like this, this just absolutely goes to show that tailoring doesn't need to be boring. It doesn't need to be just for work. It can have a lot of personality. And do you know what? I think she'd look absolutely superb. Would you wear this out? Definitely. Outfit number two. Maybe the devil does wear high street. Pop star, actress, judge, is there anything this week's guest has not done? Miss Danny Minogue. I caught up with the petite pop princess with a super-sized wardrobe. Do you enjoy showing your body off? Because you are known for being a little bit racy, aren't you? you I am a bit racy, and yeah. I, I have been. Uh, was more so when I was younger. Yeah. But um, I think, the, you know, girls have got to have an appreciation of your body, yeah. not be scared of it. Even at 36, she still knows how to turn up the heat. And, oh, you know, you can create your own video clip, you know, a very J-Lo, the hair moving. See, I think girls should work this, you know, I when they go out to a club this. or whatever. I imagine, you know, you're you could do your own looking at some guy. <laughs> so that's how she works her look, but what does she wear? I've got also a lot of couture dresses here that a virginal couture. They haven't been worn yet, they're just waiting. This one I love. Oh my God, that is to die for gothic shit. So sheet. this looks, when it's on, because of the lining, it looks yeah. nude, but that lining's been matched to my skin tone. It's the most you're... extravagant thing I've ever no, heard in my entire career. No, but you're good with detail. <laughs> so what is this? This um, is Carla Zampatti, an Australian okay. designer, and it's the weirdest thing, but... It's like a runner on a table, isn't it? Yeah. You can have a nice little dinner but party on this. you can actually... But don't think it's easy wearing all that couture. Tell me about this dress that I oh, love that's sparkly okay. and gorgeous. That is so heavy. I wore this when I got my Glamour Award. And uh, it is stunning, I could though. hardly move in it. I felt like an iceberg. I had to be stitched in because I didn't want to do like a Judy Finnegan. Exactly, with your bangers hanging. <laughs> we don't want to see. We don't with my baps out. OK. 
But when you're wearing couture, you certainly can't scrimp on the accessories, as I soon found out. Hold on. Stop Stay. for fashion. Stop, Stop for, for fashion. fashion. Right, we're going. Thank you. <laughs> Shopping yeah. Minogue style means hitting the designer boutiques. First stop, celeb favourite Giuseppe Zanotti. He's king of the killer heels, and these skyscrapers will set you back anything from 400 to 900 quid. My colour fetish. Don't do that. These are a definitely a must-have. Oh. Oh. OK. Can I get those Danny Minogue size? So you're the same size as Kylie? She's a little bit smaller, right, but okay. we're kind of like the smallest size that it goes right. down to. What would you wear with these? Don't, I'm I know, just because I'm a having a moment. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh my God. The bell that has just rung. <gasps> would you do that? I'd you know, definitely try it. I love that. These are gorgeous. I have to say, do you, when you're looking for shoes and expensive items, do you ever look at the price? Ever? No, if I've fallen in love with it, it's too it's late. Just, you've just got to have it. Where are we going now? Jewelry. Jewelry. Diamonds are forever. You are a bit of a jewelry magpie, aren't you? Yeah. I can see that now. Yeah. Do you like sparkly things in general? Yes, yes. And how much is this? This is uh, 17,000. Good price, huh? The best thing about being anus is that you can borrow the bling, so the sky's the limit. I'll show you a piece that has a lot of di 600 diamonds in it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> in the safe. Okay. Is it in the safe? Where is it? Can we have a party in the safe? Can we yeah. all in there? 120,000 pounds for them. Yeah. These diamonds are killing me. Oh my god. It is a house in your ear, isn't it? She knows how to splash the cash, but there's no hiding from a dirty laundry. Danny, I have to say, first of all, I have I something for her. I know you're going to pull out some now. This is right. So tell everyone about the Young Talent Time. I grew up on a show in Australia called Young Talent Time, where it's kids that sing and dance, and I was on it for six years. It's like the Disney years. Club, isn't it? Yeah, Aussie like version. Disney Club, yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, we had horrific outfits. Mostly things were made out of lycra. They were always bedazzled. Was it anything <laughs> like... This little bad boy. Now, do you recognise this? Do oh, you recognise this? How hideous is that? <laughs> that is a bit of fashion faux pas history. And that there. was like Going probably on. one Hold of on. the best things that I wore. Oh, oh my god. god! Oh my god! Who okay, wants so it? If you Come could, on. This is <laughs> <laughs> throwing it away. Keep it, eBay. <laughs> right. Okay. So what else do I have in my laundry basket? So, oh no! Okay. So. What I, knew you're gonna, I, knew you're gonna I knew you were going to pull that out. I knew you were going to pull that out. I knew you were going to do that. We've got a pair of silver chaps, right? <laughs> and now, if anyone doesn't know what chaps are, basically they're trousers without the crotch. Things that you don't wear. Yeah, which you don't wear. And they've got cuts all the way down the side. You've got a pair of pink tights with some black fishnets on the top. And then you've got some oh. hideous sex object going on on the center <laughs> just there. <laughs> and then you're... So, so where was this? To P Patricia Field, who does all the Sex in the City stuff, that's all from her store and her designers and downtown in New York. And obviously I got led astray by a couple of drag queens in Absolutely. her store. Absolutely. <laughs> it is very drag. I'm very it jealous is. at this point. But I have to say, you are right, and we've just found out now, because Patricia Field's shop has done so well in New York and the whole raving culture is coming back, yeah. They're starting to make these trousers again. again. Oh. Exactly. So, madam, you were so forward thinking. So ahead of Can my time. Can you give Danny Minogue that for a round of applause, please? <laughs> really love that. Right, OK, so we have here something which is so beautiful. Now, did you hear that? Honestly, girls with sparkles, I love it. I know. Right, <laughs> explain what this is. OK, this, uh, I do uh, Australia's Got Talent out in Australia, the same as Britain's Got Talent. And this I wore for the final. Uh, this is Alex Perry, an Aussie designer. He does a lot of beautiful red carpet gowns. It but it's, you just feel like a princess in it. That's, it it's is. a moment where you put on a dress like that and you go, I love my life. This is great. This is gorgeous. So who here thinks they could squeeze into this? <laughs> right, come over here with me then. <laughs> so who's first? Lovely. All right, so you ready? OK. Ten, nine, eight. Oh, 
Danny, it's fine. We'll get, we'll get someone. It was really determined. Okay, are you ready? And right, go. Nine, six, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh look, look. Got until the end of the show to suit and boot my four models from top to toe. My budget's just £800 in total. It's a tough challenge. I'm in Milan, Italy's capital of fashion, to peek inside the workings of one of its dynastic family design houses, Missoni. In a world where black is always a new black, I'm meeting the family who are responsible for getting us all to embrace colourful knitwear once again. Missoni began as a tiny family-run knitting business. A decade ago, Angela Missoni took the creative reins from her parents, and with a bit of help from celebrities, knitwear was back. I'm off to meet Angela at Missoni HQ to find out how this fashion superhouse has succeeded in reviving knitwear and making the untrendy trendy once again. Okay, so Missoni's been based in this building for absolutely decades. Uh, I'm about to go in and see what I can find in there. I'm expecting there to be a few old grannies kind of knitting around, having a chat, but that's my romanticised idea. I'm going to try and pick up some um, knitting tips. Wish me luck. Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Alexa. How are you? Yeah, Alexa, really nice well. To meet you. And Welcome. you? Who do you say is the Missoni woman? Do you have a muse that you design specifically for? I don't have a muse that I design specifically for. Are you but your own muse, perhaps? No. I'm really happy when I can dress my mum and my daughters. So, Angela likes dressing the family, but this takes home knits to another dimension. Yeah. The secret is technology. These machines can work 23 colours into a single design, taking up to two and a half hours to make just one metre of fabric. Mine looks like that, so someone's copying me, I feel. I love the palette range that you have. Mm -hmm. Do you get inspiration from different things for the actual colours that you decide to use, like uh, nature or...? It depends. The starting point is never exactly the same. So you might start from one colour that you like and you're going to put all the other colour around it, you uh -huh. work it around it. Or you might find an image that already has kind of a balance and, yeah. and you pull out at the end, you pull out a colour card every season, which is 36 different colours. Yeah. So what's more important to you, the colours that you use or the methods of knit knitting? Because I went and looked at your yeah, factory. All, uh, it all comes together. Yeah. So the shapes are very important, the colour, the lightness, really to bring the texture in, in the lighter and lighter way yeah. of the knits. Yeah. Because sometimes it's really sheer, almost. Yeah. Smells of silk in here. Look how pretty that is. It is cool, isn't it? Hi, sorry, can you just check my affair? I think it's up to scratch. Yeah, great. Thanks very much. I feel a spot of shopping coming on. Just one small problem. It all looks gorgeous, but the prices aren't pretty. This is great. I want to buy this. But it's 770 euros. <laughs> That's amazing. That's like an event dress, but in knit. 1,990 euros. It's very nice. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm buying some socks. They're 45 euros. That's not that bad, is it? OK. Thank you very, much. very much. Cheers. Those socks are very nice. It's not exactly an outfit. Time to raid Angela's dressing up box. Oh, lovely. So, what Which you season love. is this then? Is this now? It's summer uh, 2009. 2009? Yes. Wow, this is like a sneak preview. Yes, absolutely. Wow, thanks. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? it it's going to be a season of print, of flower print. Yeah, it's a good mix excellent. of flower print. It looks kind print. of like a Chinese vibe. What yeah, a coup. These really clothes right. haven't even been down a catwalk yet. Rap, High street fact, copycats take like note. Do you get annoyed, um, Angela, if you know, high street shops try and copy your designs. No. You don't mind? I don't mind. I'm very I'm even flattered when they copy the special thing. Those are not Missoni iconics, yeah, which means yeah. I'm You're on the on money. track, right? You're getting it. That's beautiful. And because uh, I, I also that. love to work with the solid and mix them and yeah. uh, and just 
get the shapes pure sometime, right? Yes, it's beautiful, yeah, I like sometime. that. So do you think I could try that one on? Yes, of course. Yes. I Please. really want to try this. Wow. <laughs> That's great. I feel quite elegant, which isn't something I usually feel. Yes, it looks fantastic. Yeah? Yes, that's how I really want like to see my clothes. Okay, fantastic. so I look like a Missoni woman. Oh, I've achieved the goal. Fantastic Missoni woman. Good. <laughs> I'm certainly planning to add to my sock collection. I'd like to move into dresses, perhaps uh, a cardigan here or there. It's a family-run business. They produce classic, timeless pieces. Yeah, I think they're a very close-knit family. For my third luck, take a pleated skirt, some elastic, and you get one Gok Wan Puff four. OK, so what I've done now is I've put on a pair of footless tights on the lovely Kate and also this beautiful bell skirt with these heavy pleats. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into a puffball skirt. It's dead easy. I've got some elastic and I've got a safety pin. And I'm literally going to feed it through the hem of this skirt. And all you've got to do is be a little bit patient. It's dead easy. OK, I'm then going to get it tight enough, but I'm not going to cut it yet, that what I can do is I can turn the puffball literally inside itself like that, and that's where you're going to get that beautiful volume of a skirt. Now, while my girl's up there, gorgeous pair of heels, really, really high, and they've also got this really contemporary fabric, which almost feels like a suede, but it's not, like a suede velvet. That is going to glisten and make this outfit look really, really cool. So... Just pop yourself in. Right, so jump down, my angel. Now on to the good stuff. I have got this shirt. Now, this comes in at £80 from Austin Reed. What I want to do is I want to try and show how classic clothing can look very contemporary. Thank you. OK, so normally with these pussy bow ties, what you do is you get it in the centre and then you tie it in a big knot at the front. Now. What I want to do is I want to create a funnel neck, which is really going to show off the long line of Kate's neck. So I'm going to get this section, and I'm going to wrap it around, keeping it nice and stiff. And then this bit, I'm going to wrap it around this way. And what this will do, this will make this blouse look far more contemporary because we're going right up the neckline. And then I'm just going to tie it into a nice bow, and then just pull out these. Now, the best thing to do if you are going to do this, is to starch this shirt all over. Starches cost about £1.39 a tin, and you know what it does? It will keep the material looking really, really crisp, and it will make your bow stick up all day. I'm now going to work on the sleeves. It's dead easy to do. I love these sleeves, absolutely fine, but I want to make this shirt a real statement piece. So what I've done is I've got a thread going up here and a thread going that way, and the easiest way of doing it is literally just to gather it. Hold on, I need to come around here. OK, so just going in and out, in and out, in and out, and then pull it through. And just repeat that all the way down the arm twice, but then leaving yourself some thread at the bottom. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to ruche this sleeve and turn it into a puffball sleeve to match the puffball skirt. So gather material up and literally pull this cotton up. And it creates this wonderful, almost new romantic, fabulous detail, which is going to stop this shirt from looking 80 quid and look more like 380 quid. Clever, huh? OK, so now I'm going to finish off. I'm going to add on another bow. Very, very big this season. Bows are absolutely everywhere. And now I'm going to take this necklace and I'm going to place it around the neck, and I'm just going to place this material over the chest. Add a handbag, and this is runway to boardroom in about 15 minutes. Executive style sorted. The catwalk showdown is just moments away. Designer diva Danny is sniffing around the couture competition. What do you think of the shoes? These are amazing. Love They're classic. Them. Love the height. That's great for Minogue. Would you think? Yeah, that's, this is a nice detail for you. What do you think of uh, wearing them to the office, though? Can you imagine somebody would actually dress up in a bondage-type heels for the office wear? 
Oh, I hope so. Uh, this oh, is pretty Can I lick special. it? Sure, no. by all means. That's £3,000. Probably take the time Tastes off good. It. It Isn't tastes it good. <laughs> It's so nice. Oh my god, it's got a mobile phone holder. Yeah, you can pockets. sling it over your shoulder. We like pockets. It. It's got a spare strap. Oh, it's a beauty. That is. <gasps> See, you could team it with I this love. as well. I love Don't that. Don't steal that. I will, I'll know where it went. What about the Balenciaga yes. dress? Yes. It's really nipped in, oh, and then you've got I this love on the it. shoulder. I think that's a bit amazing, naughty, and I'm sure that kind of splits open when you sit down. Gorgeous. Danny, a dirt bag. So, which is your favourite item, do you think? The bag. The bag, it's so indulgent. It it's is very just, nice. It's so wrong, it's right. Very uh, much for chatting. Nice, me. nice speaking to you Thank and you. I'll be off. <laughs> Bring it back. It's security. Danny, you know your couture, but can you spot a good deal? I've got five luscious leather jackets. They range from bank busting to bargain. Now, I want you to tell me what is the cheapest and which one is the most expensive, all right? So I've got some okay. stickers for you. You stick them on which one you think is, okay. is, is I, right, I no? Are you very competitive? I hate this leather, I love the colour, cotton lining. Oh. This one, the leather's really thick. Right, okay, so what would that mean to you then? A thick leather? Because some people well, might think, well, durable. The re if you go into any really expensive store, it's normally, they say it feels like butter, and it's oh, right. really, it's almost slippery, it's so thin. Next one, nice thin arm. They've, they've put some effort into that line. Okay, so, so that's would... saying something to me. Absolutely. That's not just a standard. Very interesting that you've gone straight to the lining and not to the actual leather. I love that. It means you do know your fashion. Ooh, soft. Nice. Butter. This Easy one feels butter. like butter. Okay, so Daddy, come on then, girlfriend. Not sure about the lining, but the, Bang your the stickers leathers. On. The cheapest I'm going to do. Think one? This one. Oh. For me, I love this one. Okay, so you and like that one. the lining is good, okay, yeah. Okay, so come back here then, lovely. So girls, will you now reveal yourselves in price order, cheaper this side and more expensive that side. So go, girls. Oh, you did it. Well done for Danny Bernard. I love it. Let me have a little look. Danny, you certainly know your looks leather. This Biker Beauty by D&G was the most expensive at 830 smackers. Second, 2812, cash in at 375. Reese had this sage green gorgeous number at 285. And this Navy Bombers the business at 120 quid from Topshop. Finally, new look rock the Red Rebel Biker for 100 pounds. Give it up oh. for Biker Chick Danny Minogue! Yeah. Nine to five has never been more fabulous. Here's my fourth and final workwear wonder. So we start off with a really good pencil skirt that fits nice and tight around the bum and also goes down just below the knee. Anyone that works in the corporate environment should have one of these in their wardrobe. Do you know what? They suit every single body shape and they make women look so uber sexy. So that's on first and now the blouse. So. This top is like a tunic top, loads and loads of material, and I think probably if you see it in the lookbook for the designer, you would wear it like a tunic, but I want all of that volume, and I'm gonna bring it down on the shoulders, and I'm gonna tuck it into the skirt. Because what I want to do is I wanna create two different lines on Trezan's body. I want the fitted, tailored skirt to then clash against the balloon effect of the blouse, and that's what's gonna give this outfit all of its dimensions. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm then going to finish off the line between these two items, the skirt and also the blouse, by adding on a belt. And it's this join again, which is going to fool the audience into believing this is the designer side and not the high street side. I'm now going to add on a pair of heels, inexpensive, but you know what, I've blown so much money on the blouse, I'm going to have to go for a cheaper option. But they're red, they're heels, they kind of work. So, there's one, there's another. This just goes to show that under 200 quid, you can look office chic, and do you know what? This blouse will never, ever, ever date. It's for life. Do you love it, Trayvon? I love it. Would you wear it out? Definitely. Do you now want to become a recruitment consultant? I want to wear it now. I can tell, Forever. you look gorgeous, right. Outfit number four in line for a promotion. OK, so this is my absolute favourite outfit this week. I think it's amazing because it looks so expensive. I don't think you'd be able to copy this on the high street. Just the structure of it is very Balenciaga. And then you've got the YSL bag, which is 
beautiful. Do you like the bag? Love the bag. I heard you murmuring earlier that you might want to steal it. Well, <laughs> if it does go missing, it's not me. <laughs> I did hear Gox saying exactly the same exactly. thing. Exactly, everyone's mm, got their eyes mm, on that. Mm, and also the stunning. trousers, they're not conventional for the office, but I think they're fabulous. And I think, why not? You should wear things like that at the office. Make it more fun. I think it's going to be really tough for Gox this week. You're onto a, a hard one. So my working girl outfits are finally coming together now, but I have to say this week, it's been so tough. It's been really hard because of the theme. But for all of you that think you only have to go to high-end designers to get your tailoring, do you know what? We've got so many new ways of cutting the clothes now on the high street. I have to say, it is getting better and the tailoring is much stronger as we can see today. Will all my hard work have paid off or will the four label lovers make the deal this week? Next, the catwalk face-off. So my fashion judges tonight are getting really impatient for the catwalk show to start. Now, I've had a winning streak for the past few weeks, but I'm very nervous about tonight's theme because it's working, girl. And it's notoriously hard to style. And I have to say, the designer clothes are looking executive class. But hopefully, my outfits are going to show you guys and this lot just how nice boardroom chic can be. But first, time for more of this week's must-haves. It's a perfect size, gorgeous colour, and it looks expensive. Bag it when you can. Pure silk, candy stripe, sweet prize. This top's perfect for work, rest or play. Boho chic at its best. This embellished sundress means you can sparkle all summer. The four fashionistas have selected their perfect designer outfits for the battle of the ballroom babes. Sexy and worky. We, I worship at the feet of Pork Sweeney. This clutch is just so divine. What do you think? Oh, I love this. I think that's a really glamorous works. look for the working girl. Oh, I love Roland. That is amazing. The inside is almost as amazing as the outside. This season is a great, great season for the return of glamour to the working environment. It's so important to get investment pieces in this area of your wardrobe. Four first-class looks with credit-busting price tags. I had only 800 quid to do the lot. So the tension is reaching absolute boiling point backstage now. The audience are gagging to see the show. In a moment, my four girls are going to be flying the flag for High Street down that runway. And I genuinely this week feel that I might get my bum thrashed out there. OK, so all the models are lining up in a random order. We're going to send them out randomly to confuse the audience a bit because we don't want them to know which one's got styled and which one's the buyer styled in designer clothes. At the end of the catwalk, they'll have to decide which side they prefer and they won't know which is which. So it's going to be tough, but hopefully the designers will win. Moment of truth, the audience must now decide which four looks they like the best. 
How about that enough to win to prove every one of you can afford to look stylish? The question is, which collection will the audience vote for? OK, so those are our eight working girl looks. They're all amazing. But now you have to decide which side you prefer. If you like this side, please use your black card. And if you like this side, hold up the pink number. OK, eyes on the prize and hands in the air. Let's go. Oh, it's a close one this week. With the votes cast and counted, it's time to find out the all-important result. Hi. OK, then. Thank you, everyone, for voting tonight. I hope you enjoyed the working girl theme to the fashion show. I'm dying to find out, Alexa, which one won the vote. Well... I can reveal that, with an overwhelming majority, most people voted with their black card, which means the high street side... Yes! Of it. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, well, you've all got very good taste, I have to say. So come on, then. I'm dying to find out exactly how much did this entire collection cost us here. It was £11,908.50. Very important, that yeah. 50 pence, right? <laughs> OK, very... my side came in at all four outfits at a staggering £782.83. Pence. <laughs> At these prices, everyone's a winner because girls, style has no price tag. <laughs> Next week, I send Queen of Brecky Telly, Lorraine Kelly, on a shopping mission. Starting now. Ooh! Go. <laughs> Alexa Chung gets an exclusive meet with the fabulous French designer, Christian Lacroix. How much? does it cost to get a couture lacroix dress? It's a part of the secret. It's a secret, <laughs> And I go head-to-head -head with the fashionistas in all-out party girl glamour. Girlfriend is ready to hit the clubs.